Okay, in some previous videos, we created a proxy server, a Linux proxy server, and we set it up and we put Squid and SquidGuard on a Linux machine to create our proxy. And when we did that, we essentially created this proxy server, and then we went to our clients and we configured um, proxy settings in the network settings dialog box on the web browser. So like in Internet Explorer or in Firefox, you can set the browser and configure the browser to use the proxy and so then when web requests are made from the hosts they go to the proxy server and then the proxy server makes the web request on behalf of the hosts so that way all of your web requests on your network can be filtered by the proxy server the downside to this is that if a um, host or if a client figures out that they can just change the preferences in the web browser and then turn off the proxy server setting then they can bypass the proxy server and go straight to the router to the gateway and make their web request directly to the internet so that's a proxy scenario now there's ways of of trying to control that like you could set up a group policies that tell your users or basically force your users not to be able to change those settings in the web browser right but then you're gonna to have to also have additional group policies for other types of web browsers and then they could always put a web browser onto an external thumb drive or something like that and so there's always ways around this scenario so another scenario is to create a transparent proxy server and what you do there is is now the clients directly request web pages from the router but unbeknownst to them the router sends those requests to the proxy who then um, sends the request to the internet so there's no avoiding the proxy server right so that is a this is a more uh, foolproof way of forcing your users to use your proxy server but the downside to this scenario is that you need a router that can redirect traffic on the internal network to your proxy server and send it to the proxy server on port let's say 3128 or whatever port squid is functioning on and so you need a fairly robust router to do this well, what you could also do is you could set up your proxy server, your Linux proxy server, to also be your router. So in this case, we take the proxy server, we remove the router, and now our proxy server is our router. So the proxy server is the router. It's going to handle the routing. It's going to handle network address translation, NAT. It's going to handle DHCP, handing IP addresses out to the clients. And it can even handle DNS and other things. It can be a file server. It can do everything. So it's kind of an all-in-one solution where you take your Linux computer and turn it into a, a router and an everything box and a transparent proxy. So I'm going to, in this tutorial series, we're going to set that up. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, CentOS Linux. And CentOS is a server distribution of Linux. It's uh, freely distributed, uh, free to download, and it is um, related uh, or, or identical even to the Red Hat Enterprise Linux server distribution. And Red Hat Enterprise Linux is a uh, well-known um, distribution. Red Hat's been around forever. So we're going to use CentOS. Now I'm going to discuss two ways of doing this so that you could, if you wanted to set up this lab and do this lab from home, you could do it from home all from your laptop. So this demonstration that I'm going to do is going to be run completely from my laptop and anybody could do it. So I'm calling this here a CentOS server virtual machine router proxy and NAT on a personal computer VMware network. So here on my laptop, this gray box here is my laptop and I'm connected on my laptop right now I have a 2.101 IP address 192.168.2.101 and I'm connected to a wireless router at 2.1 right and so this is my computer now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a VMware virtual machine and it's going to be a I'm gonna install CentOS Linux on this virtual machine using the VMware player and what I'll do is is I'll set up this virtual machine with two NICs I'll set it up with Ethernet 0 and Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 0 will um, pick up an IP address from the wireless router right just like my laptop does so my laptop has picked up the address 2.101 and so on Ethernet 0 on my virtual machine I'm hoping to pick up an address like 2.102 and then my virtual machine will have a second NIC 
for the interior network right since it's going to be a router and traffic is going to go through this machine I'm going to have two network interface cards right so here is my virtual um, internal local area network here and I'll put a client on here and so this private network will be the 192.168.111 network right and then so then requests from this other virtual client will go to my Linux CentOS machine right to my router my proxy it'll go straight to there and then it will route the traffic and NAT it out of the 192.168.2.102 address so we can set this up just on using VMware player with two virtual machines one for our CentOS uh, router proxy server and another virtual machine used as a client on this internal network right so I've got this laid out for how it goes we're going to need to make Ethernet 0 put that into bridged mode so that it picks up an IP address from the wireless router and Ethernet 1 we're going to need to put that into what's called a LAN segment on the VMware player and the LAN segment will be another private network that will be on this side of the CentOS router proxy server now in the lab we did this a little bit differently and I'm going to discuss that too. So we did this lab the other night in the computer lab at the college and it was done a little bit differently because all of the students at the college we have a different setup so I'm going to discuss that too. So if you had a, a lab that you wanted to do this in I can show you how we did it there. So in our lab it's the same the same basic principle. We're going to set up a CentOS server that's going to function as a router and it'll have a private network on one side, a local area network, and then it'll have the other side which is essentially what we'll call the the wide area network or the public network on this side, but both are in fact private, right? So we're using private addresses on both sides. So the way it worked at the college was the problem we had was we had um, these computers that we were going to put CentOS on but they only have one NIC, they only have one Ethernet port right so how do you make the CentOS server that we're setting up in the lab that only has one Ethernet port we don't have any extra Ethernet cards and it's uh, you know small machines right so what we to do that what we did was is we set up sub interfaces and VLANs and used a trunk to the switch to make it work so in other words we have one Ethernet port on the CentOS server that we set up, right? So instead of just having Ethernet 0, right, we turned it into Ethernet 0.110 for the 11 network, and we set up Ethernet 0.111 for the 111 network. So basically we set up two IP addresses on one Ethernet port on our server. So this Ethernet port became 11.100, and it also was 111.1. .1. So it was the gateway for the internal network and it had an 11.100 on the outside. Now this one port, not only does it need two IP addresses and two sub interfaces, but it also needs to have a trunk to a trunked port on the switch. So we were able to set up a switch with a trunk port. The port has been configured as a trunk and it can trunk two VLANs, VLAN 110 for the 11 network and VLAN 111 for the 111 network and then the switch also had a trunk with all VLANs for all the students to go to our router and then out the internet. So this is basically how we um, we set it up and the router was not only the 11.1 network but we have a lot of VLANs so all VLANs went out of this trunk to the router. So this is basically how we set it up in the lab all you need is a switch with um, configurable ports capable of doing trunking and setting up VLANs and then essentially you give each student two VLANs one for the red side which is the going to be essentially the the public side and one for the green side and you give them their own special VLAN so every student got a trunk port with VLAN 110 and they got their own private VLAN so we had a 111 we had a 112 we had a 113 114 115 and so on and then then the one trunk port goes to the server into the one Ethernet port which occupies two IP addresses or two sub interfaces so all traffic can go in and out of the CentOS server as if it was two separate NICs but in fact it's only one and I can show you how to do some simple configurations on the Linux servers to make that happen 
to make this whole thing happen, we were assisted by my um, former student, Steve, who is a Linux junkie, and also Chad, who showed up to help uh, make the lab work. So I'm really excited to be able to share what we did um, in these videos.